Hello and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Have I got something special for you today? The name of this tutorial is called Thinking Outside of the Box. We're using Luminar 4. I'm starting out here in Photoshop, but it's, it's all about Luminar 4. You can do everything I'm doing right in Luminar 4 exclusively. So we're going to take this particular image and I'm going to show you how to turn it into this image. Of course, I did add a sky replacement to it, but mainly look at the tonal values of the image here. We're going to take a relatively flat looking image and turn it into a really exciting image. Using unconventional methods, we're going to use a color tool and a black and white conversion tool. On this image, I'm using a uh, color tool. It's super powerful for adjusting tonal range, luminosity values of your image. And it's going to be quite interesting. I think you're going to enjoy it. So stay tuned till the end because at the end I show you how the black and white conversion tool can also help you in adjusting luminosity tonal values to your image. So let's get started. I'm starting out in Photoshop but you could do this right from Luminar 4 as a standalone product. Okay so either way it works. I'm just using Photoshop because I'm going to compare the results at the end all right but anyway we're working with a stock image today the sky is kind of boring so the first thing we're going to do when we bring this into uh, luminar is change out the sky um, but anyway i've already duplicated my background layer so we're just going to go ahead and launch luminar 4. okay so we're going to come up to the creative tab and open it up and let's just go up to ai sky replacement i love ai sky replacement it just does a great job Let's just pick any old sky here. I'm going to say blue sky too. I think that works. I'm not going to mess with anything here except I'm going to come back to the Essentials tab and go to AI Enhance and just give it a little bit of AI Accent. Maybe something like that. Maybe even AI Sky Enhancer. So that's the first step. Now on to the fun stuff. First off, what we need to do is come up to our Layers tab right here and add a new adjustment layer by clicking this plus and click on add new adjustment layer. Now this is a very important first step. You gotta get this one right. You gotta go to the blend mode and you gotta change it to luminosity. And when you change it to the luminosity blend mode, you're only going to be working with the uh, light and dark tones of the image or the luminosity of the image. You're not gonna be working with any of the colors. So that's very important here. And then after that, we're gonna come down to essentials and we're gonna click on the color filter. Now, we're using the color filter not to adjust color, but to adjust the tonal range of our image, and this is really awesome. So check this out. Here's where I recommend you start out with. If you move this saturation adjustment to the right and left, what's your image? Look how your tones change. You see that? Look how I can put some punch into this image by moving this saturation to the right, but I'm not affecting the color in any way, and that's really awesome. We can also come with the vibrance, and we can tweak it as well. And just, you know, just get it to look where you think it looks right. You know, shift it one way, shift it the other way. And maybe something, something like that. I'm going to leave the vibrance at zero. Okay, now we're coming to the advanced settings. We're not going to mess with the color cast. Uh, of course, I haven't experimented with that. We may try that and see what it does. But the next thing I recommend is coming the whole way down to where it says Hue Shift here. Now check this out. This is really cool. If you bump this to the right, look how you're adding drama to your image. Okay? I mean, you can go crazy. Because what you're basically doing is shifting the hue of the entire image, but it is not affecting the colors, and that's really cool, right? So, starting out at zero, if you move it to the right, you're going to add some punch. If you move it to the left, you're going to take that punch out. So you can use this as a fine tuning adjustment as well later. And we'll come back to that at the end of the edit. But let's just uh, shift this hue just a little bit. And I find a little bit goes a long way here, but right there. Let's click this toggle here. Here's the before and here's the after. So pretty amazing results with a color tool, right? Affecting luminosity. This is exciting to me. I hope you're getting excited. Let's play with the remove color cast. I said I wasn't going to use it, but let's see what it does. I mean, it makes some adjustment there, too, so you might, you might even want to play with that a little bit. And, okay, so right there. So, again, let's toggle before and after. So, right there, with those four simple adjustments, we already have a better picture. 
So now let's come down to the fun part here. And we have all these colors that we can work through. Let's start with red. And here's what I recommend. Start out with luminance. And let's just move it to the uh, right and watch what happens to our image. See, we're taking the light or we're taking the red tones and we're lightening them or we can darken them. And I might just darken them a little bit to add a little bit of contrast here. And uh, now we'll go to the orange tones and let's play with that. See, we can lighten them or we can darken them up, depending what we want. And look at your boat here, too, because there's oranges in the boat. And just kind of, like, get it looking where you think it looks right. Now, you can also come here with the hue and saturation. Like, you could shift this hue a little bit, and you can use this for some fine-tuning. You see that? Isn't that cool? Look at all this adjustment you have. This is so powerful. And we can also play with its saturation a little bit and get it tweaked just the way we like it. So you have all this adjustment here. You can even shift the hue of just that one particular color and get a lot. Or no, I take that back. Where did I have that? I had that on seven. Don't do that. Mistake. This uh, shifts the hue of the entire image. So don't, you don't want to mess with that one. So let me get it back to where I thought it should be. Yeah, seven or eight right there. Yeah, don't do that. All right. Now, the next step is we'll go to the next color. And look, we're just going through all these colors and we're just adjusting the luminosity tonal range just the way we like it. So now we're working with yellows. So we can brighten our yellows up. We have a lot of yellows in the trees. Do you want your trees lighter? Do you want your trees darker? See, we can really darken them up. And I might just slightly darken them just a little bit. And don't forget, you can do some tweaking with this uh, saturation and also with the hue shifting that hue a little bit but look at the power of your adjustments here it is amazing and I'm excited now we'll go to green let's see if there's anything in here well we have green in the trees and probably in the water so we can lighten that water up and look how that sh look how that reflection kind of pops out there we can take it back or up And maybe right around there. And let's do a little bit of fine tuning here with the saturation. And also with the hue, we can shift that a little bit here. Maybe somewhere right around there. Now we'll go to cyans. I'm sure we're going to have some cyan in here. Yeah, look at that water. Look what we can do with that water. We can make all that... You know, like the shadows from the clouds really pop through that water there. Maybe right around there somewhere. Now let's play with the saturation to tweak it. But look at the look at the amount of uh, adjustment you have here, right at your fingertips. Who would ever think a color uh, adjustment could do all this for you to adjust tonal range of your image? Now let's go to blues. Say we want that sky to become a little darker. Don't want to go too crazy here, but we can go crazy if we wanted to. But look at the power in there. Might just make it slightly darker. Because I'm watching the water here. I don't want this to look weird here. So I might just darken that just a little bit. Now let's play with the saturation. Which is not affecting saturation. It's affecting the actual tonal range. Maybe something like that. And let's play with the hue. We can shift that hue. Maybe something like right around there. Now let's see if there's any purple tones in here. And you have a lot of colors broken down here, which is really nice. On that mountain there. See this mountain back here? When I adjust that, there must be some magenta in there or some purples. So we can darken those a little bit. Add a little bit to that drama in there. Just a little bit there. Now let's play with the saturation. See, if I make the saturation stronger, it'll make those tones go even darker. So that's pretty cool. And now let's shift the hue a little bit, one way or the other. See, I can shift that hue more towards the uh, purple tones. And then it goes even darker. And then we can come back and tweak the luminance here. 
Do you see the power here? It is truly amazing. I don't think there's any pink in here. I just see a little bit of something happening right in there when I adjust that. So I think I'm just going to double click that and leave it where it is. Now, after you've done all this, I would recommend that you come back up to your saturation and then just do a little readjustment here. To get it to look just right and also with your vibrance. Maybe something like that. And we could even play with the remove color cast here. Maybe right around there. And let's play with the hue shift one more time. And this is kind of like a workflow for this. You know, start out with those saturation vibrance and hue shift and at the end finish off with it. And just kind of just tweak it to where it looks just right for you. And maybe right there. Now let's click this toggle. So here's the before. And here's the after. Pretty amazing. Now I would finish up with uh, coming to AI Enhance. Now we're still in the luminosity blend mode. So when I adjust the AI uh, accent, nothing is going to be affected in terms of the color. So let's play with this a little bit. And maybe just add a little bit of that in there. And what happens if we work with the AI Sky Enhance? So we can darken that sky up a little bit. And if we felt uh, our image got a little darker, let's uh, click uh, let's click the before and after. Now the sky is going to be gone when I do this. But here's the before and here's the after. Pretty amazing, right? It's pretty, pretty awesome. It excites me. Let's go back to light and see if we need to bump the exposure up a little bit. And maybe just slightly, like, like right about there. Okay, so now let's click the eyeball. Here's the before and here's the after. So pretty amazing results. A color tool adjusting the luminosity values of your image. Isn't that amazing? I'm going to show you another uh, twist on a uh, tool, and that's going to be the black and white conversion tool coming up next. Now, the name of this video is Thinking Outside of the Box. And basically, you know, we're looking at tools that were not meant for this particular purpose that we're working with today, working with the tonal range, the luminosity values of our image, and making them work for us in really powerful ways. Now, what I'm going to show you now is a carryover from what I do in Photoshop. And a lot of people do this. They'll take a uh, black and white adjustment layer and put it in the luminosity blend mode. And they'll be able to adjust the tonal values of their image luminosity levels with that black and white filter. All right. So what I've done here is I've already, uh, here's the locked layer right here, the original layer. And I added a new adjustment layer, but I set it to the luminosity blend mode. Very important, just like I did in the color tool when I showed you that. So, but I want to show you something very interesting here. Let's go back to the locked layer, the original layer. Let's go to the Essentials tab and AI Enhance. Now watch what happens when I turn the AI accent up. Watch the color. You'll notice the color starts to increase. So AI accent's doing a lot of things. It's adding pop to your image, but it's also increasing the color in this particular image, and you can see it there. What if you wanted to make this AI accent adjustment, but you didn't want to affect the color? All you have to do is this. Make yourself a new adjustment layer, which I've already done. Let's go up to that layer, adjustment layer one, and let's check it and turn it on. Now let's come back. Now remember, we're in the luminosity blend mode. Let's come back to essentials, and now let's bump up the AI accent. I'll take it the whole way up. You notice the color never changes. So very important. I just wanted to point that out to you. Now we're going to go to the um, black and white conversion tool, which is right here under the essentials tab. And we're in the luminosity blend mode, so this is really cool. So if I wanted to make the red areas lighter, I just take the red a slider and move it to the right. See the gloves and the scarf and even her face because there's red in the face a little bit. Everything gets brighter there, but it does, does not affect the colors, which is super cool. Now let's play with our yellows. And let's bring those up a little bit too, because it brings a nice glow to our face here. And what I'm trying to do with this adjustment is bring some um, attention to the model right here. So let's bring that up a little bit. 
Now let's play with the greens. Now there's green on these um, on these buildings right here, mainly in the shadows here. So watch what happens if I move these greens to the left. I can deepen up those shadows. You see that, which is kind of nice. And I might bring that almost the whole way back. Now let's play with cyans and see what's in the cyan range. Not seeing a whole lot in the cyan range. If you look at these, let's call them Boca bubbles down here. If you wanted to bring those out more, I could move this up to the right. See that? See how they stand out a little bit more? So I might bring that up. Now the blue is really where the drama is going to take place because we have all this blue in the sky back here. So if I take the blue to the right, I'll lighten that up. But remember, I want to draw emphasis to the model. So watch, I'm going to take that blue back a decent amount there. But notice how my model just starts to pop off the screen because now the attention is drawn more on her. So something like that. And let's play with the magenta. Not seeing much happening in the magenta, but if you look, see these Boko bubbles right up in here? If I pull this back, I can get rid of those. Or if I want to show more of those, I can pull this up. So I will pull that magenta up. Now let's click on the toggle here. So here's the before and here's the after. Black and white conversion tool adjusting the luminosity values of the image so pretty interesting stuff i'm back here in photoshop so we can recap a little bit so here's our first image that we worked with the color tool if you really want a lot of fine tuning in your luminosity adjustments for your tonal range of your image the color tool is your tool to do that now Here's the original image, and here is after we used the color tool to make the tonal adjustments. Pretty dramatic, right? Now, we did add a sky, too, but look at that. Isn't that amazing? So, again, here's the before, and here's the after. Beautiful. Now, let's go to the second image. Now, here's our second image of this girl. I love this little scene here. These are both stock images, and I think I mentioned that earlier. But anyway, so here's this particular one. Now, this is the black and white conversion tool. It's a great adjustment. It's, it's a little quicker. It's a little faster, but not quite as um, powerful as the color tool, but still a very good one to use. Now, let's take a look here. So here's the before, and now let's click on the after. So that's where we brought it to with that. So again, here's the before, and here's the after. Thinking outside the box. We can really get creative with Luminar 4, and I always like to try to figure out new and better ways of using it, and I want to share that with each and every one of you. Hey, if you enjoyed this video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends, pass it on. And also, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please click that subscribe button and also click the bell notification icon, and then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Well, again, thanks for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And please don't forget to leave comments and questions in the comment section below. And I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.